Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 25 years, as she developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you to grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We got a whole bunch of people on hold, so I will get to them in just a minute. Little news flash from Sweet Home, Alabama. I'm a happy mommy tonight because Jonathan, Prince Jonathan, His Majesty, my son, who's 28, and his wife, Dr. Mallory, the veterinarian, flew in this afternoon from Los Angeles. And we haven't seen them since January, since the first of the year. So I am just thrilled that they're here. They're here for a long weekend, and I couldn't be happier. They were a little concerned about coming in with the COVID stuff, and I said, I don't care if you have leprosy, (laughs) come on. And so they thought that was pretty funny, but everything went great on their flight and and, uh, here they are. So I'm delighted that they're home. Let's go to the phone and our first person we're gonna talk to is Ryan Singer. Ryan, are you with us? Ryan, can you hear me? Hi, Ryan. Hey, the Ryans are reunited once again. I know it. Thanks for I know. Show. I got to be on Ryan's show, you guys, and I told him one of the first things I told him was, "Hey, I loved your name." Because <laughs> we're, we're we're part of the Ryan yeah, we, brotherhood, sisterhood, yeah, mafia, like, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know what it is about um, people with the name Ryan, but we've never seemed to lose our enjoyment or our love for the name. It seems like. I know. Absolutely. And that's my maiden name. And so that's what I use. That's my legal name. And, uh, and you know, I'll use my married name for social things. But but I've kept Ryan. You guys, Ryan's a stand-up comedian. He He's he's really this, you know, big star stand-up comedian who's, who's quarantined now, right, Ryan? In Los Angeles because of the COVID. You had to cancel your tour, right? Yeah. It's, it's weird to even think of myself as a stand-up comedian right now because I haven't been on stage performing for anyone in a live setting since February. And oh my gosh. So it's been a challenging time when, you know, for all of, you know, for so many people and, you know, obviously, uh, for the some people, the recording has started. Uh-huh. But, um, the, you know, it's like when so big, uh, such a large part of me for the past, 15 to 18 years has been defined by getting the opportunity and pursuing the thing I love, you know, first and foremost, it's, it's difficult when that's, when that's no longer an option to you. So, you know, we kind of adjust and we figure out, okay, well, the world obviously wanted me sitting at home thinking about stuff right now. And (laughs) what am I going to take from that? And, you know, am I going to try to make the best out of my time and, and, uh, you know, come out better on the other side of this whole thing? Right. Well, and I find it so interesting coming from that comedian background, how you have pursued and are continuing to pursue a uh, interest and manifestation of things that are spiritual. And how how did that happen? How did you go from being a stand-up comedian? I mean, was it a spiritual uh, experience every time you were on stage? (laughs) Whether you were booed well, or me, booed or, or or praised, <laughs> yeah. The that's, I mean that's a great question. I I think when I was very young, I was I was raised in a, a Catholic uh, family, and uh, both my mom and my dad side of the family they both had large large families. And the my grandparents, I was fortunate enough. I was one of the lucky ones. I had four grandparents when they were alive, that were some of the 
the best people I've ever met in my entire life. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's actually like the more, the older I get, the more I realize how profoundly lucky I was to have these like living saints in my life. Right. And so I was, very drawn to like be a priest when I was young and I you know my mom tells this great story where she my brother and I shared a bedroom on our entire lives until he, he's a year above me in school so he's like a little over a year older than me and so until his freshman year of college we shared a room and so one night we're in our room and we're little kids and she's out in the hallway and hears us having a conversation and I'm asking him like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he's like, I want to be like an air force pilot or something like that. And he goes, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I was like, I want to be a priest. And he's like, why would you want to be a priest? And I said to him, and this is what my mom, she'll never forget it. She says, you said, I want to be a priest because I just see myself up there on that stage. And I tell everybody mass has ended going go in peace to love and serve the Lord and they all have to listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly as a middle child, I felt like I wasn't uh, getting the attention I needed. And I mean, what more captive audience could there be in the entire world than an audience that believes that the, the, the fate of their eternal soul rests in paying attention to you? I mean, I wish comedy club audiences were, were, were that attentive, <laughs> but, uh, so I kind of had the bug in me from, you know, even before I remember to want to be on stage and perform and try to, you know, pass along something. And for me, it's like the journey between, you know, spirituality and comedy and, you know, the paranormal. If I can, if I can make some of these topics that I love so much and that interest me endlessly, if I can make them be like understandable enough to where, like an audience member who never really even thinks about this stuff can laugh. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like a, a spoonful of comedy helps the paranormal or helps the spiritual go down. Right. I mean, most right. people's favorite priests when they were growing up were the ones that were the funny ones. Right. And right. so using that to try to, I don't know, not reach people. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, I just want to make people laugh. Cause I do feel like that's probably the, the, it is the best medicine for almost anything. Well, yeah. I agree with that. And it's interesting because people say to me a lot, you're so joyful when you do this woo-woo work. And I said, well, it's based in love because all spirits are pure love and love feels good. And so that's what it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to feel bad. It's supposed to feel good. <laughs> And so I think that's, you know, really interesting how I get that a lot. They'll say, you seem like you're having a lot of fun doing this work. I said, it is fun. It's a blast. And yeah, and that's the thing that people that take my class are so amazed about is that we have such a ball learning this stuff and practicing it and doing it. So, well, Ryan, how can people find you? Tell everybody about your show. Tell them how they can find you and, and your social media. I have already posted links to the show, your show that I was on, on all my social media and asked Julie Ryan, but let people know how they can find you. Cool. Well, I appreciate that. I've also, by the way, I've received uh, a message uh, just like I think it was yesterday or the day before saying, Two of my favorite podcasters uh, came together. I wasn't expecting it from uh, when you were on the show. It was such a great episode. Um, oh. Yeah, so it was like that was a really cool message to, uh, to get from a listener. The, uh, they can find everything about me at ryansingercomedy.com, links to, links to uh, my podcast, Me and Paranormal You, which is the one uh, that we did. I also have another uh, podcast called This Is Where the Magic Happens with a co-host friend of mine, which is a lot of fun, pretty raucous. But uh, the me and Paranormal You started about six and a half years ago uh, because I had some profound paranormal experiences in my life. I wanted to, you know, investigate and just start talking to people. Um, and it turns out so many people have had paranormal experiences once they sit down and think about it. And not many were willing to, to discuss it until they start hearing other people talking about it. So it's been a really fun journey for me. Um, so yeah, and I'm on the social media at Rising, R-Y-S-I-N-G, and they can find me everywhere there. 
Don't you think, too, that paranormal to most people is like ghosts and scary stuff and things like that? But paranormal really, as a category, involves visits from deceased loved ones and miraculous things that feel good and are not scary as well. Wouldn't you agree? I would 100% agree. My, the way I like to use the word paranormal is anything outside the normal. Anything that's accepted. I mean, because it is funny how people have, I was at this convention called Alien Con. I think it was in 2017. And ancient aliens from the History Channel put on their own, like, paranormal convention. And I had a booth there. And the people were like, okay, so me and Paranormal you, what do you, you so you interview people about uh, being abducted by aliens. And I'd be like, well, you know, that and, all, and ghosts and all kinds of stuff. And they'd be like, well, that's not paranormal. And then somebody else would walk by and be like, so your podcast is all about ghosts. And I'd be like, well, it's about ghosts and aliens and like alchemy and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, well, that's not, you know. So it's everybody has a, like, not everybody, but many people have such a specific viewpoint about what the paranormal could be when I'm kind of approaching it from a more of a broader sp- uh, perspective, like you said. Anything that's mm-hmm. outside of the mainstream, what we accept to be real and or normal, because often those two words even though they're different are equated with each other and which is unfortunate um because then those of us who experience things that are outside the normal are made to believe that they're not real and right well yeah. we're going to need to take a break but ryan thanks for joining us this evening everybody check out my instagram and facebook ask julie ryan and check out ryan's as well everybody you're listening to the ask julie ryan show we'll be right back after the break stay with us welcome back to the ask julie ryan show this is julie i'm your host this evening and we're going to go to the phones and our first caller is kathy hi kathy julie how are you, girl? Thank you. I'm doing okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. I'm calling from um, Amherst, New Hampshire. All right. I bet it's beautiful up there. It is. It's beautiful here. Yes. All right. Can you mute your iPad or your whatever um, you're talking I, on? I'm not watching you... you anywhere other than. Okay. Terrific. The, it may have been call. somebody else that called in. Okay, terrific. Oh, okay. Well, you got a question for me? I do. So two weeks ago, um, I found a, a enlarged node in my um, axillary on my right side. So I've had an ultrasound and biopsied. I don't have any results yet. So I was wondering if maybe you could see something for me. Tell everybody what your axillary is. It's in my armpit okay. area. All right. So they're not quite sure where it's coming from. Um, so it's a lymph node that's in your right armpit. Okay. Yeah. What I'm going to do, yeah. Kathy, is I'm going to get you on my radar. And how this works is I'm going to raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit because we're all spirits attached to a body having a human experience. And when we're attached to a body, we vibrate more slowly simply because the body has mass. So I raised my vibrational level. I'm going to watch a laser beam come from my body here in Birmingham, Alabama. It's going to hook into you in New Hampshire. And it will be as if I have an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI in my head. And I'm going to shoot energy through you and it will light up. I'm going to just for time's sake, I'm going to go to your right armpit. uh, And we'll see what's going on. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama. It's heading up to you. All right, got you. Shooting energy from your feet up through the top of your head. All right, so so they put dye in when they did the the um, biopsy, right? Did they use dye? Did they do a CT scan on you, no, or what did they do no, first? They, they didn't. They just did a um, a biopsy. They took um, just a couple samples for the okay. pathologist. Okay, because it, so. it's lit up. It's kind of fluorescent. Which is interesting. Have you had any tests oh, done a, recently? They do put a little piece of metal in there, you know, okay. to, to tag it. All right. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm going, it's fluorescent. So they did something. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yeah. It's fluorescent. I could see that my brother had surgery and they um, 
oh, they marked some lymph nodes in his neck. And I was in the pre-op area with him before surgery. And I scanned him right before they took him back. And I thought, oh, for God's sakes, his, these lymph nodes look purple. What the heck? All of a sudden. And then oh, I realized it was no, the I dye. That far yet. <laughs> yeah, it was the dye. But I knew they'd done something because like I said, it's fluorescent. I don't get it's malignant, Kathy. What I'm doing is I am encapsulating it and removing it uh, energetically. So if in fact, they need to do that. It'll be a breeze. I'm, I'm not, I'm not seeing malignant. You're not. Okay. I'm not. That's yeah. good news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big sigh, big sigh here. <laughs> well, and, so. and I, I'm, I'm pretty accurate. Nobody's a hundred percent, but that's what I'm getting from what I'm seeing. And I'm also, uh, when I ask the question, I've asked the question three times and I got to know. So hopefully, okay. Hopefully it will just be some something that your body is processing and um, it will be a non-event for you. That's what I'm yes, hoping. Hopefully that's what I'm praying for. <laughs> okay. So, well, keep yeah. us posted. Good luck. Thanks Thank for calling. Thank you so much. You yep. bet. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. All righty. Let's go to, I believe our next color is Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Hi Tracy. <laughs> How are you? I am so excited to talk to you. <laughs> well, thanks. I'm excited to talk to you. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. I am calling from Huntington, Long Island, New York. Good. How are you doing up there? I'm doing great. I initially heard you for the first time on Inspire Nation. Um, your podcast on angels was just blew my mind. <laughs> oh, on Michael's show, he he, I had him on on uh, my show last week. Just to introduce him, like I did with Ryan earlier, and he's he's terrific as well. I am so blessed, Tracy, to be asked to be a guest on all of these shows, and it's so much fun because I never know where the conversation is going to go. And they, right. some of them say, "Do you want me to send you the questions ahead of time?" I said, "No, I'm gay. Let's just see where it goes." So it's well, fun. I love it. You just have like a way about you that you just kind of take hold of the conversation and you just are so calm and you just know exactly where to go with it. So I, I love listening to you. Oh, thanks. Well, do you have a question for me? Yes, I do. Um, it's sort of, I feel like, I don't know if, if it kind of started back in like the whole beginning of the COVID um, time period, but I kind of feel like... Um, my body is sort of in like a fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really not like I could think of any particular thing that's like, you know, I'm afraid of. I almost feel like it's just maybe the collective energy or something that I'm kind of sensing because I'm a very sensitive, empathetic person. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really kind of played havoc on my body in terms of like my neck has been extremely tight um and i you know i've always had kind of a tight neck but as of late it's just like to the point where i've been having to see a chiropractor regularly just to kind of work it out um so i don't get like headaches um so it's kind of been concerning because i'm like you know i'm like is it really my my body sort of in a fight or flight is it really something kind of underlying that um you know hasn't been addressed so I'm kind of open to hearing what you might think it might be and just open to another um, opinion. <laughs> right. Well, I, I went ahead and got you on my radar just for time's sake, Tracy, and watched my laser beam come from Alabama <laughs> up to you in New York. And while you were talking, right before you said, I've been seeing the chiropractor a lot, I watched a chiropractic adjustment happen on your <laughs> neck. And I, so I saw that. And yeah. I think that's great that you're getting that done. Let me see if, how, how is your diet? What are you eating? Um, I'm actually vegan. So I'm plant-based um, and I love plants. I, um, I really have a very good diet. Uh, I really try to take care of myself. Um, mm -hmm. Tracy, stay with us. I'm going to hold you over the break. Everybody, you're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us. We'll be back right after the break. 
Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and we're talking with Tracy from New York, and she was telling us about um, that she feels like she's stressed, I guess, Tracy, more than anything, right? You feel like you're in a flight or, fight or flight response, you were saying, before the break. Yeah, I kind of do feel like that, but I really can't, I don't know if I can necessarily necessarily place like one particular thing that is, um, you know, bringing me sort of anxiousness, I think maybe it's just kind of the uncertainty of everything that's kind of happening in the world at the current moment. Mm -hmm. That's what I got. During the break, Tracy, I went ahead and scanned you. I had already connected into you right before we went to commercial. And you, your energy field looks like static that you would see snow or static or snow that you would see on a TV screen that was malfunctioning. You know, I don't know how old you are, but back in the day that TV stations would sign off at night and we'd see this snow stuff while they'd be playing the national, they'd play the national anthem and then they'd sign off and you just see this snow on the screen. That's what you look like. So what I did was I grounded you and you can do this yourself. I think that's what I needed. Yeah, you can do this yourself a couple of different ways. First of all, if you're near sand, did you tell me, I think you said you live on Long Island, yeah. right? Yes, I yeah. do have plenty of beaches around me. <laughs> Honey, go get your bare feet in the sand. Okay. And if you don't have time to do that, put your bare feet in the grass. And uh, when the weather gets too chilly, do you have a garage that has cement or do you have a basement with cement? Yes, I do have a garage with cement, yep. There you go. You just stand with your feet on cement, on dirt, on sand, on the ground. Cement will on... even work. Cement will work. Blacktop will not. Asphalt okay. doesn't work. So okay. you need a natural surface. And just do that for about five minutes. And, you know, you're going to be a new woman. It's really yeah, that so, easy. Yeah, Julie, can you explain why grounding is so crucial for us? Well, you know how animals like to lie in the sun? A lot of times mm -hmm. if they're outside, they'll just lie in the sun in the grass or sometimes right. they'll lie on cement. We've got squirrels that lay on our patio in the middle of an Alabama summer in the heat of the day, <laughs> spread eagle. And I'm like, you guys are going to fry. Doing That's like this. my but, cat, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's vitamin D. And, you know, animals that are inside oftentimes will find them laying near a window and the sun comes in. It just helps ground. It's we're electrical beings. We have frequencies mm -hmm. and it helps ground us. So there's lots of stuff. If you Google grounding, you'll find products that are available online right. and right. Uh, and you can buy them and you can put your feet on them or whatever. But it's easy. Just put them in the grass. And if it's cold, put them on your on your garage floor or in wow. your basement if your basement's heated. The other thing, too, Tracy, that I'm getting is. To your point, with things being so topsy-turvy right now with all the quarantining and are you quarantining, are you not, are the kids going back to school, are they not, it's just right. so crazy, is go back to if something feels good, mm. that's coming from spirit. If you have a thought that yeah. feels good, that's coming from the spirit. If it feels bad, that's fear. And it's yeah. coming from I've your been brain. really struggling with here. Yeah. So here's a trick that I teach in my class and I'll give you a little little a preview. And for those of you that are listening, you'll get this too. An easy way to differentiate between whether something's a real fear or a fake fear is to ask yourself, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? I call right. it the two minute rule. And it works right. great because if you're standing in the middle of the road, get out of the street before the truck runs you over, for heaven's sakes. That's a rational <laughs> fear. If it's not, if whatever's happening and you're feeling angry, anxious, sad, you know, anything that we would think of a negative um, emotion, ask yourself, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? If it's not, it's fake. It's fake news. It's false. You, you right. break that cycle with that. So play with that. As soon as you go to curiosity, it raises your vibrational level. It makes you feel better immediately. Yeah. You're going to be amazed. So you don't see anything really like inherently wrong with my neck. No. It's really like the grounding nope. is what's going to really help. <laughs> grounding and um, the chiropractic, I think, continue to yeah. do that until your, your muscle memory is remembering what it's like to be in the proper position. That's what happens. That's wow. why we need several 
visits sometimes is because the muscle memory is trying to pull our our skeletal system and our muscles back to what it was like when it was whacked. We want it well, to so, remember when it's, it's so like interesting when, though that you said about the grounding because sort of inherently I feel like I knew that but I didn't mm -hmm. really realize how to do it and how important it is. It is. Yes, very much so. Yeah, and it's easy and it's it's free. <laughs> if you yeah. just go stand in the grass. <laughs> so I hope that helps. Go take a walk on the beach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. I love I love hearing your perspective. Oh, thanks for calling. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. All righty, let's see who's next. I believe it's Mohan. Hi, Mohan. Hi, it's Hi. Mohan. How are Mojan. you? Mohan, I'm sorry. Hi, Mohan. It's just like it's Hi. spelled on my dashboard. I thought I was being fancy here, I guess, you know, making the J silent. I, sorry about that. I live in, <laughs> Where, L I live in L.A. Everybody um, thinks it's Mohan. <laughs> oh, there you go. You know. Terrific. It sounds like a Disney character to me. Are you a Disney princess hiding in L.A.? Like my inner child is, for sure. <laughs> well, my, my favorite movies are Frozen 2 and Mary Poppins. So there you go. You know, I oh, always you laugh. Mary Poppins. You had Mary oh, yeah. Poppins. Julie Andrews. You're my favorite. My I, I, I always teased. I was teased Tim, my husband, and I say, you know, I'm like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. <laughs> and he just you rolls his eyes. Andrew's sound of music. You have a sound of, you have her energy, that loving energy. Oh, oh she's my favorite actress. Yeah. So oh, anyway. That's so cool. I love it. Well, terrific. You know, here's, so the, here's, the, here's the problem. I wanted to know about my love life, but then um, over the radio, I heard that you do animal stuff. And I'm going to have to choose my dog over my love life because I've been struggling with Hartley, um, who has, who had heart failure five times in Ooh. five months. And I've been like, my PTSD has tripled. And not only that, the doctors did a procedure to help his heart, but they're like, his degenerative, degenerative valve disease is like so bad it's like leaking and I rather do some healing on him than even think about my love life right now. Aww. As much as I'd love to ask you, I have, I have to put him first. Because what kind of dog is he? He's half Shih Tzu, half King Charles. So he's a foo dog. He sounds darling. He's a, shit he's a King shit. <laughs> It's a really awful joke. I, I do. <laughs> oh, that's hysterical. Well, as I said at the beginning of the show, Jonathan, our son, who's 28, you know, my baby is 28, and his wife, Mallory, who's a veterinarian, I'm going to tell her that. She's going to love that. That's hysterical. All right. So well, what I'm going to do. I also say he's a, king, he's a king shit, shit king or king. It doesn't matter. Either one. There works. you go. All right. So what I'm going to do, Mojan, is I'm going to get, get, connect to you. I just connected to you. Now I'm connecting to Hartley. I love that. Okay. Hartley, what's up? Hartley, Hartley's spirit is out of his body at the moment, Mojan. Um, I hate to tell you that he's, he is, he is dying at the moment. So when humans die and when pets die, the spirit exits through the top of the head and holds on to the top of the head. looks like a cartoon caption bubble. And that's what he's got going on. So uh, I am unable to scan him medically because when the spirit is attached to the top of the head, it's like the power source is out of the body. So I, it would be as if I was looking at an x-ray in a totally black room without any electricity. So I'm not able to do that from a visual standpoint. Let's see what's going on. How is he behaving? Is he acting like he's in pain or he's, he's suffering? He's in no pain. He just faints and then collapses um, because oh. the valve is leaking. So we're just like changing medication and like we're like working around the clock with him. All right. So let's ask him the tough question. Hartley, do you want to be euthanized? He's saying no. Mojan. Yeah, no, he's a he's tough, saying he's no. A Scorpio. Not he's right not, now. All right. He doesn't want to go. Yeah. No, he does not. He just told me that. No. And we're talking with him. So yeah. what 
what can Mojan do to help you? He said, you're, do, you're doing everything. He, he's, he loves being with you. He loves being right next to you or on your lap is what he's telling me. Um, how will she know when it's time? He's saying he's going to go on his own. You're not going to have to make the decision. Yeah. Is there any healing we can do for him? Well, that's what I was saying. I'm unable to do a healing on him because his spirit is not in his body. It, it, the spirit is the power source for our body and the same with the animals. So I can't get a visual on him. What I did was I just in, encapsulated him in a big bubble, in an iridescent bubble, which just gives him energy. But as far as doing an actual healing while his spirit's out of his body, I'm, I'm unable to do that. That's how that works. Does that make sense? It would be like yeah. trying to do surgery without an x-ray in a pitch black room with no electricity. I understand. So is it days, yeah. weeks, or months? Or I, we, I guess just enjoy every moment with him maybe right now. I think he's uh, he is dying at the moment. So that's all I can tell you as far as, will it is it imminent? I'm getting a no on that right now. But what's imminent? You know, the next hour or the next day or... Um, okay. Yeah. So okay. that's what I'm getting right now. Uh, keep him comfortable. What we hear about with humans with the palliative care. I think that's, that's where you are with him. So I know that's not what okay. you wanted to hear, but thanks for calling and, uh, good luck with all of that. Everybody you're listening to the ask Julie Ryan's show. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and we're going back to the phones, and our next caller is Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Julie. How are you, girl? I'm good. How are you? Terrific. Thanks. Please tell everybody where you're calling in from. I'm calling from Glenwood, Illinois, which is close to Chicago. Sure. Yeah, yeah terrific. How are things up there? Um, pretty good. Uh, we're hanging in there. No problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know you guys have, my, my brother and sister-in-law live in Naperville, which I think is not too far oh. from you. Is that right? Are you on the west yeah. side? Yeah. Yeah, well, and, we're, yeah, we're further south, but Naperville's very nice. Yeah, and they um, always say there are two seasons in Chicago. There's winter and summer, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, they don't ever want to go anywhere in the summertime because they want to stay there because it's the nicest time of year to be there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, terrific. Well, good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Do you have a question for me? I do. Uh, my dad passed about a year ago, and mm -hmm. um, we uh, actually are very blessed that he went the way he did because he didn't suffer much, but he went so fast that my mother and I have kind of, you know, gone through shock through the whole thing, and at the end, my mother was with him that whole entire day right before he died, and we didn't have any clue he was going to go as quickly. Even the hospice um, people came in and said, oh, yeah, he's got another month or two. So she, you know, kind of intuitively felt that it might be sooner, and I intuitively felt it might be sooner, but we were, you know, this was all new to us. And she was very, very tired and came home, and the next morning he passed at 4 a.m. I was supposed to go see him that day, and, of course, you know, we were both just totally taken by surprise that he went as quickly as he did. So she's been feeling very guilty about not having been there with him. They were married 64 years almost. Aww. And she said, I have got to be with him. I've got to be with him, you know. And it, it turned out she wasn't. So she's been struggling with guilt. Um, and I'm wondering if there's anything you can say to her. She's 87, and she's listening right now. Sure. The speaker. Sure. What's her name? Her name is Joan, and my dad's name was Al. Okay. Hi, Joan. Uh, first of all, we all decide when we go, where we go, who's with us when we go or not, and what the circumstances are. Every one of us, our spirits decide that. And the validation is ask any funeral director anywhere in the world. And they have bazillions of stories collectively about and the family's sat with 
dad for weeks and uh, Aunt Susie was on duty and Aunt Susie left the room to go get a cup of coffee and dad passed away while Aunt Susie was out of the room. So we all decide that and we feel guilty about it, but it's out of our control. Your dad was the one that decided that. And we, it's hard for us to wrap Diane, our human brains around why would he decide to go by himself? But my Mima, my grandmother did the same thing. I had left her an, a half an hour before she died and she didn't want to be a burden on anybody. She just slipped away. And I think that's probably what was going on with your dad is he just wanted to go out. He didn't want to cause extra work or extra stress for anybody. And that's normally what we get, but we can ask him if you want, we can call him in and talk to him. Would you like to do that? I would, because she's concerned that he was angry with her before. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No. And have you, have you or your mom read my book, Angelic Attendance, What Really Happens As We Transition? Yeah, we just got the book. We just got the book like a couple days ago. Good, good. Well, the the thing about it is that you're going to find in that lots of stories about people and their transitions and you're, it's just going to be really heartwarming for you and a lot of information, but how we connect to our deceased loved ones, Diane and Joan, is we think of them because every spirit has its own frequency and our heads are like big satellite dishes. So how we connect to them, like we're connecting to a radio station is we think of them and that tunes our satellite dish heads right to their frequency. If you're doing something random during the day, like making dinner or folding laundry or something like that, and your dad comes into your mind just out of the blue, that's him letting you know he's close by. Mm. If you want to talk to him, yeah, just think of him and he's right in. It's like Bewitched. Did you watch Mm. Bewitched as a kid? Yes. The TV show, you know, <laughs> Samantha Stevens would, she would snap her fingers and she'd yell mother and then Dora would come right in or Uncle Arthur and Uncle Arthur would come in. That's how it works. Whoever wrote that TV show knew woo woo. <laughs> I always laugh and say. <laughs> so your dad is right there with you. Tell me his first name again. Al. Al. Okay. Al, what was up with you sneaking out while <laughs> nobody was there? He, again, he didn't want to be a burden is what he's saying. He's saying that he didn't want to upset your mother. Yeah. He thought this would be easier for her. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, how were you mad at Joan? He's saying his words, heavens, no, (laughs) heavens, no. (laughs) He, he's saying that, that you were as close to the perfect wife that you could be. Like I was just talking like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. I guess, uh, anything. So he's showing me black eyed Susans. Is that a flower you have in your garden or is that a flower you like, or is there some oh significance? God. What is he showing you? I'm sorry. What he's is showing he showing me, you? He's showing me black eyed Susans, the black flowers, Susan? the yellow uh, flowers. Well, I don't know if this is connected, but about two or three days after he died, our hosta plants went crazy. Oh, well, maybe, I don't know, but he's showing me black eyed Susans, which are all blooming like crazy right now. You know, they're kind of a deep yellow and they have a black center in them. They look like daisies, but they're, they're, um, yeah. So was he a gardener? Uh, he did his, he, he spent so much time on his lawn. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. fun. Well, good. <laughs> well, hopefully when you read Angelica Attendance, it'll help a lot and it'll okay. help bring comfort and, and it will hopefully be really heartwarming when you read the stories. There, there really are stories in there about miraculous things that happen as people are dying and, and then comments from their loved ones who were left behind. And it's, I think to help us understand that there's a glorious component to the dying process because we're all so afraid of mm-hmm. death, especially in our Western yeah. culture. Our our parish priest likes to say people are afraid to die because they don't know if they're going to fly or fry, which mm. I think is oh hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it's yeah. true because it's mm-hmm. been so controlled 
over the ages by religions and cultures and you know what's the best way it's been used to control the masses what's the best way to control the masses fear we're living yeah. through that right now with all this COVID stuff wear your mask don't wear your mask go to school don't go to school I mean my goodness yeah. it's just kind yeah. of all over the board so does that help Joan it, um we're just, I hope he, it does. He, we yeah. weren't you know what? We're going to need to go to a break, oh, okay. Diane, so I'm going to let okay. you go. But Thank thanks you. so much for calling. All righty. Everybody, you're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and... We are going to go back to the phones, and our next caller is Mary. Hi, Mary. Hey, I'm calling in from Minneapolis tonight. Terrific. How are things up there? You guys have had a rough summer. It's been a little rough. It feels like it's calming down now. Terrific. Yeah. Good. How are things well, with you? Well, things are fabulous in Sweet Home Alabama. My baby's home, so it doesn't get any better than oh. that. I'm a happy mommy. Wonderful. Yeah, Wonderful. you know, it's so funny because we think that we kind of get out of that mood when they grow up. It, it, I don't know that it ever leaves. I mean, I imagine when I'm ancient, I'm still going to feel that way. I have I have a couple of stepkids and I love them too, but, you know, I birthed this one, so he's, he's here. And, <laughs> I uh, hear you, and, and uh, that's one of the reasons I'm calling. One of yeah. my children is struggling. Oh. And... I, with all that's happening in the world right now, I think it mm -hmm. really could be getting to him. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's anything I can do. Now, I should let everybody listening know, I have taken the Angelic Attendant Training Course, which I loved, and it is helping in all areas of my own life and in my family. Um, you know, I know a piece, I have a better knowing, things are great. But now this has come up, and I just need a little extra help. What Mary's talking about is my class that I teach. You know, I tell everybody I'm a businesswoman and an inventor that learned how to do woo-woo, and, and I'm a buffet of psychicness, and now I teach people from all over the world how to do this, and we've had uh, close to 100 people go through, Mary, since February of 19, and so Mary is one of our Wonderful. graduates. Yeah, yeah. So actually, my next class is in October. I limit it to 12 people. That'll be the last one I teach this year. So if any of you are thinking about it, go ahead and sign up because I've only got two spots left and it's only mid-August. So if you're thinking about it, go ahead and get one of those spots. Well, so Mary, what's going on with your child? First of all, is it a he or a she and how old are they? It's a he and mm -hmm. he is a teenager. Okay. And... Um, I think it's just a, a combination of things, and it just seems like a um, kind of a negative jag. How's that? Mm -hmm. And I'm just trying to figure out what I can do to soothe and help him on his own course. I realize mm -hmm. he has to live his own life, but, right. you know, it's that mom radar. Yeah. Easier said than done, huh? How mm -hmm. is his diet? What does he eat? Does he eat um, junk? pretty... Pretty healthy, um, mm -hmm. mostly plants. Yeah. Uh, and again, he's a teenager, so he'll eat a lot or he'll eat a little. And he <laughs> is interested in food, so uh -huh. he's he's mindful of it. Okay. Because food is really has such a big role to play in our emotions and in our brain chemicals. Studies have shown that violent criminals that are in prison, when they remove sugar and processed food, they have an 88% reduction in violent behavior within like oh, a wow. week. Yeah. And that ha hmm. that plays a role in the depression thing too. And depression usually is a root cause of behavior that we would say is less than optimal, like violent. I mean, it doesn't sound like he's violent, mm -hmm. but depression definitely. No. So sh anything that, sh that has sugar in it or anything that's processed is really, it's best if you can stay away from it. Good luck with that with a teenager. But certainly Doritos and things like that that have lots of chemicals in them, try and just don't mm -hmm. have them in the house. You can control yeah, what's in the really house. that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I tell you, where I get those kinds of Dorito-like things is at Trader Joe's and 
Costco, they have them with all, without all the chemicals and stuff in them. And um, okay. those chemicals can really cause depression and can cause other, other brain things. What I'm going to do, Mary, is I'll connect to you and then from you to your son. And let's see if I can get a read on him, see if he'll let me scan him. So here we go. Here comes my laser beam from Sweet Home, Alabama, heading up to you in the Twin Cities. Got you. Okay, at your son. I'm talking to your mom. Is it okay if I scan you? Yes. Wow. Good job, mom. Whoa. I always, I always yeah. ask permission for those of you that are first time listeners. I never scan anybody without their permission, even if I ask it telepathically, because I believe it's an invasion of their privacy. And I'm not mm. going to do it. Yeah. I can, but I won't. So, all right. Yeah. He depressed. Looks like kind of a grayish fog over his head. So I'm removing that, Mary. Let me get that okay. out and see what's Thank going on. You. Okay, I'm getting food and sunshine. I mean, is he in front of a computer all day? Is he playing video games? What's oh. he doing? Yeah, well, under the guise of a an online class. Uh -huh. So yeah, there's a lot of computer time. Yeah. I think that sunshine switch and the food sound like that feels, yeah. that resonates like a good shift to me. Yeah, get him, get him in the sun. Sit him on the patio or on a deck or something if you have it and just act like he's a potted plant make him sit out there and get sun on his skin without sunscreen on it for at least 20 right. minutes a day best if he can walk okay. you know or do something do you have a dog right. can he take the dog for a walk yes i think so there and you go and he had been and then he stopped you know how yeah. it is with all yeah. of us we get in our good yeah. habits and then we rotate out Right. So, so these are I'm getting, wonderful. This is a great reminder. And thank you for clearing that gray cloud. You bet. Food and sunshine. Okay. Low on okay. the food chain. If God made it, he <laughs> can eat it. If man made it in a factory, no. Show him a Twinkie and an apple. Ask him which one did God make. Even little teeny kids know that. <laughs> so those Twinkies, right. you know, with well, 50 thanks, years shelf thanks lives. Thanks so much, Julie. I am loving okay. the show. Oh, thanks for calling, Mary. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All righty, let's go to Amy next. Hi, Amy. Joy? Hi, Amy. Hi, girl. Hi. Wow. I'm so happy to speak with you. You too. How are you doing? Please tell everybody where you're calling from. Calling from San Diego. Yeah. What's, how are things down muggy. there? You know, we've been muggy, but it cooled off the last few hours. So it's like, wow, this is great. You know, it's like. I thought it was going to rain, you know, that feeling after it's so hot and it's going to rain, but it's, not, it's just cool right now, so it's so much better than it's been, but, you know, tomorrow's another day. Good. Well, you got a question for me? Yeah, Julie, I had such a weird experience a week ago Monday, and it was about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and I almost got hit by a car on my bicycle. I mean, Julie, I thought that was it. I thought... They're going to hit me. I could t I could have touched the hood of that car with my arm. And huh. I just looked up and I saw the green light flashing, meaning pedestrians, and it was clear when I went. But, Julie, it was amazing. Then then I was halfway down the block, and I was untouched. Nothing wow. happened to me. Wonderful. And it just... Yeah, and I have, I have been floating around like, what the heck happened? And I have a hunch that my dad and my ex-husband, who are on the other side, may have been part of that. I don't know. Is there any, can I ask you that question? Is there a way you can help me understand what that was about? Because that was, I don't yeah. even know, I don't even know the words to put into it, but I'm so grateful. But who saved me? Your guardian angel, I was doing an instant replay while you were telling me about it. You know, like when you're watching a football game on TV and they, they score a touchdown and they're yeah. doing an instant replay. I was doing an instant replay, Amy. And everybody, Amy's called into the show for a long time. And you were in, you had quite a few breaks earlier this, was it this year or last year where you were oh, really? I've, yeah, this year. In March, really I broke injured. my shoulders three places and fractured my knee and yeah. I've broken six, what, four teeth one time, cracked my jaw. You know, I, I have been through it. I've been in the hospital for a month with spinal infections 
And I always mm-hmm. come out. I mean, this was crazy. It was mm-hmm. so crazy. It was so woo-woo. And I'm like, wow. What I'm seeing you know, happen, Amy, so- in an instant replay is your guardian angel. And our guardian angels stay with us in all through all of our lifetimes, which is really cool when we find that out, I think. And um, your guardian angel put like this padding of air between you and the front of the car. Does that make sense? Like if there was not bubble wrap, but just put this big pad of air that gave you a few seconds to get out of the way before you were hit is what I'm seeing happen. Wow. And I, was there any reason? I mean, of course, you know, fear my life, but man, I, I guess I'm just out. I'm like, wow, I, I don't even know how to get back in the body. I'm just floating like well, that. All was right. Well, amazing. so what I was talking about earlier with our caller who needed to be grounded, Tracy, who called in earlier, go stand mm-hmm. in the sand. You're in San Diego, for God's sakes. Go find a beach. Put your bare feet in the sand. Stand on cement. Stand on rock. Stand on grass. That will ground you. By the way, this, this grounding technique, it works great, Amy and everybody listening. It works great if you're traveling and you're jet lagged because you're going in, in and out of different time zones. Go stand barefoot on cement or on the grass. It will get you into that time zone immediately. It's miraculous how well it works. So, Amy, that will ground you if you can do that. Just uh, go stand barefooted. Thanks for calling in. I'm so glad you're okay. My goodness, girl, you be safe. Everybody, you're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. We'll be back right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and we do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call-in number is 712-775-7035, and the access code is 483-620-POUND. You can find this information a whole bunch of different places on my website at AskJulieRyan.com. It's in the show notes anywhere you download podcasts. We're also on YouTube and Alexa, and it's in the show notes there. While you're on those uh, different platforms, Apple and iHeart and those kinds of places, be sure and subscribe and leave a review. I love hearing from you, and I love hearing what you think about the show, how I can make it better, what anything that you'd like to hear. And uh, that's a good place to leave it is on the review section of those podcast downloads. Let's see. Also, while you're on my website, be sure to sign up for my weekly newsletter. It's a question somebody submitted online along with my answer. And I get lots of questions and one is chosen each week. So if you don't have time to call into the show and don't have time to do an appointment, submit a question and your question might be chosen. While you're on my website too, you can schedule an appointment with me and then we'll have a whole hour to talk about whatever you wish. And as I mentioned before, I got two spaces left for my October class and it's a blast, you guys. It's life changing. The only prerequisite is you got to speak English. And if you're listening to the show, there's a good chance that you speak English. But we do the first hour. It's four Saturdays in a row for two hours. It's online. It's live. People from all over the world have taken it all walks of life. And the interesting thing is the first hour we do lecture and discussion. The second hour is practice. And that first week we're doing remote viewing and people think they don't know how to do this stuff. They're doing it right out of the chute. So it's really fun and life-changing in so many ways, so many positive ways. It just brings in abundance in every area of your life. All right, this week we got a question from Kristen, and Kristen lives in Wadsworth, Ohio, and she said, Hi, Julie. How can I stop revisiting a friendship with someone who's not a good vibrational match for me? I feel a deep and strong connection to him. It's as if we have shared many past lives. I find myself almost unable to stop seeking this person's attention, even when he causes an abrupt end to most communications. That that didn't sound great. She went on to say, thanks for your insight, Kristen. 
And here's my response. Hi, Kristen. When I first read your question, I thought of two songs by the English rocker Robert Palmer. The first, released in 1986, is called Addicted to Love. And the second is called Simply Irresistible, and it followed in 1988. Both tunes seem to describe the relationship you're experiencing with a man who doesn't return your affection. And although you haven't come right out and said it, sounds like the strong connection you feel to this man has you believing your soulmate. Despite the fact Merriam-Webster Dictionary, for those of you that don't know what that is, young people may not know what that is, defines the word soulmate as, quote, a person who is perfectly suited to another in temperament, end quote. Literature and the entertainment industry have perpetuated the idea of a perfect soulmate for every person. This false belief can cause people to forego wonderful potential life partners in the pursuit of the, quote, the one. I'm making air quotes when I say the one. Many believe the soulmate concept originated in 360 BC when Plato wrote in the symposium, quote, love is born into every human being. It calls back the halves of our original nature together. It tries to make one out of two and heal the wound of human nature. Each of us then is a matching half of a human whole. And each of us is always seeking the half that matches him, end quote. I thought that was interesting. I'm thinking, where did this soulmate concept originate? So I researched it and that's what I came up with. That's a long time ago, 360 BC. That's a long time for us to get brainwashed into thinking we can only be with one person as a soulmate. I went on to say back to Kristen, I believe you are correct in your assumption about why you feel, as you describe, a deep and strong connection to this man. You've shared many lifetimes together. In fact, the last 87 lifetimes. No wonder your attraction is so intense. Everyone we know is a soulmate to us. Our parents, siblings, children, and other family members, along with friends, lovers, colleagues, and the checkout clerk at your local grocery store. Humans play different roles in each lifetime to experience something our spirit is exploring. That's why we incarnate, to have a human experience as a creator. Just because someone is your soulmate, it doesn't mean having them in your life will be beneficial or even enjoyable. Having said all that, it sounds to me like this man doesn't treat you very well. That in itself is a reason to forget about him and this futile relationship. Instead, focus on the characteristics you want in a partner, and in doing that, you'll attract someone who loves and cherishes you. And after all, that's what we all want. And then in closing, I said the author J.R.R. Tolkien, who was married to his wife Edith for 55 years, put it best when he wrote, quote, the real soulmate is the one you're actually married to. And that is true because you wouldn't be married to the person if they weren't a soulmate to you. So I hope that helps. I hope, Kristen, that that helps relieve you from your situation with this guy. I'm saying, you know. What I say to my sorority girls, you guys know I'm a sorority advisor at the University of Alabama. And when they're telling me they're crying and they're saying, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend or whatever. I always say, I want you to remember one four letter word. And that is next, next, who's next? It's just take what you like from a relationship, figure out what else you want, focus on that. And that's what you'll create. We're in an attractive universe. So if you focus on what it is you're looking for, that's what you're going to get. So I hope that helps, Kristen. Okay, let's go back to the phones, and I believe our next caller is Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi, Julie. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Wonderful. I'm calling from Mason, Ohio, which is just very north of Cincinnati. That's right. Oh, my gosh, Julie, just everything you're saying I just resonate totally with. I go from caller to caller to caller. It's like, oh, my God, that's wonderful. She knows that. She's got that. Um, (laughs) Just to share, with Ryan at the beginning, I was tickled because um, I always wanted to be a nun. He said he wanted to be a priest. And uh, Karen, I'm going to need to hold you over over the break. We'll be right back. Everybody, you're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Karen, we'll pick you up on the other side of the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and we're talking with Karen from Ohio who wanted to be a nun when you were little or <laughs> recently. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, what did you say? Did you want to be a nun when you were little or is it a recent yes! thing? Oh my gosh, yeah. And um, I, my brother, who was a year older than me, said, Karen, if you have, I came from a large family. He said, if you're a nun, you can't have children. And a dear friend of mine in second grade, I told her, but I'm going to have five kids. And so, you know, we met at a, like a 10-year high school reunion. And I said, and, you know, we're catching up. I said, why well, I have five children? She goes, you told me that in second grade. So, you know, we subconsciously kind of predict things. But I, so did I won't you have, did you end up having five long. children? I, I just wanted to say, oh, my gosh, Julie. I had a personal reading with you for people mm -hmm. on the line that have not. And I do a lot of this stuff myself, you know, the spiritual stuff, Akashic Records, and I'm an end-of-life doula, and there was something missing there. And I knew there was some kind of hole in my energy field, and I couldn't, I couldn't heal it myself. And so I just prayed about, please send me, you know, someone who can do this. You know, there's people locally that do stuff. And all of a sudden, your information popped up. And I had to wait like a month, you know, to get an appointment or a phone call with you. And it just changed everything. I mean, Aww. you know, we had a discussion. You healed up my energy field. I'm right back out there. I'm doing Akashic Record readings. I'm a minister. I'm doing my end-of-life doula stuff. Wonderful. You did it. And I'm just Wonderful. so profoundly grateful. And the grounding thing that you suggested, I do that like two or three times a day, going outside. You know, I, I'm not a big outside kind of person, but gosh, it makes all the difference in the world. It like pulls me out of my head into the ground and then shoots up. It, it's just wonderful. So I am so, so, so grateful for you. Um, Something that we Thank shared you. that I don't know if you even remember, I've lost so many people in my life, and mm -hmm. that just kept ripping on my energy field, and I never wanted to connect with anybody because it was this profound sense of betrayal. I've lost so many people. Mm -hmm. And so I guess my question is, is there anybody, I'm just the, opening a little sliver to hear from anybody that would have any message for me? Well, there's lots of people that have messages for you, Karen. The way that I do it is, who do you want to talk to? Let's just cut to the chase. Again, as you heard me say earlier, our heads are big satellite dishes. So who do you want to talk to? We just call them in. You, we all have people around us all the time. So, And it's lots yeah, of people. So I'm thinking, like, and I'm sure there's no ego once people cross over. No. Nope. But... Um, I would love to hear from my grandmother, who was just this amazing, kind, wonderful woman in my life. Okay, what was her name, Karen? Her name was Antoinette Doppies, Gunlock Doppies. Antoinette, wow, fancy. Grandma, yeah, Grandma Netta. Grandma, Grandma Doppies. Netta, okay. So when we think of them, they come in, and they're, they stand right next to us on the right side of us. That's where they are, where I always see them come in. So Grandma Netta, how we get the conversation going is kind of prime the pump with a couple of questions for her. And then usually they get very chatty. <laughs> so do you have a yeah. question for her? Um, oh, gosh. I just, you know, want to feel her energy. Um. Do I have a question? Yeah. What does she see about my current life path? Well, in the first place, before we get an answer to that question, did she, was she a baker? Did she like to bake? <laughs> uh, no, not so much. I'm the baker. Right. She would she, do these okay. wild concoctions on, you know, when she was watching us. Mm -hmm. She was just an amazing she, being of just love and unconditional love. Okay, so she's showing me baking, like baking cookies, baking, just baking stuff, like baking, yeah, baked goods kind of things. So maybe that's you. Maybe that's why she's showing that That to is me. me. But yeah. yeah, all right. So she knows you're doing that. <laughs> so she's with you doing that because she's showing me that. All right, so... What does she think about your path? She's saying you can do whatever you want to do. She says you're you're very wobbly about what you want to do. Her word, wobbly. Yeah. That's, that's she's saying uh, it's good for you to explore lots of different things, but 
you'll really be able if you can focus on something and continue to be led on it that that it's you're really going to excel at it and it's it's fine if you want to do like the shotgun approach versus the rifle approach to something the shotgun approach is kind of you put it out there and you see what's going on she's she's saying to me tell her she can't make a mistake you can't make it so grandma's saying you can't make a mistake which is true right we can't make a mistake with anything we do in our life. It's all part of what we're experiencing. But do you, can you do you have a question that's more specific, Karen, about Pathwise? Um, I've been very active with the Red Cross, traveling around the country, a mm-hmm. bit concerned about COVID, and I'm also, like I said, um, end of life doula, and I'm having a mm-hmm. hard time because hospices aren't take you know letting us in. So between those two, what direction should I go in? She's saying talk to the churches and um, and work with families through the churches that need help instead of going through the hospice facilities, the hospice agencies. Yeah. Uh, so she, so you're in Cincinnati. There are a bazillion churches yes. in Cincinnati. And, and oh, yeah. she's, she's saying get involved with some of the churches. So they're going to then recommend you to other churches and you're, you'll have more business than you'll know what to do with. All right. That yeah. makes total sense. And again, yeah. Julie, I, you're amazing. Absolutely oh. amazing. You know, Thank I can't, you, I can't thing. even express, you know, you know, the clarity and the very next day, cause I had been so fragmented the very next day after our conversation, I woke up and I had this feeling of well being which people take for granted, but I hadn't felt that for probably 10 years. Oh, Just well-being. And it was incredible, and I thank you so much for that. You are most welcome. And, you know, it's not me doing it. It's spirit working through me and with me. So I don't take credit for it. I'm I'm just the I know, but you're the the conduit. conduit. And so thank you for putting yourself in the position to be that conduit. I really appreciate it. Thanks for calling, Maggie. Take care. Thanks for calling. All right, hon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, Karen. Karen. This is Karen, not Maggie. Sorry. Thanks, I know. Karen. I know. Sorry. I'm looking at my it's dashboard It's all good, hon. I wanted to be okay. a Ryan because right now Karen isn't such a great name. Ah! Um, okay. Even though Take I'm care. the polar opposite of the stereotype. All right, hon. Oh, Bye. Buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go to Julie next. Another Julie. Hi, Julie. Hi. Hi, Julie. How uh, are you, girl? I have. <laughs> Pardon me? How are you? I could be better. I could be worse, though, too. I just Aww. have been feeling at my lowest. I feel awful in my body and mind. Oh. Um, I feel very fearful and worried and scared and um, kind of like paralyzed to do anything. And then if I do try to do something, I start to feel weak and I get ready. And I feel mm-hmm. kind of fainty, so then I, I, I get scared and I say, what's wrong with me? And um, I don't find any joy in life, and I'm mm-hmm. wondering if I'm dying. Okay. Well, I'll scan you, and we'll see. Where are you calling us from? Um, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay. All right. I mean, here comes my laser beam. From Sweet Home, Alabama, up to you in Wisconsin. All right, got you. You are not dying at the moment. Your spirit is very much in your body. What are you scared about? All this COVID stuff? Um, scared of my health. Um, every time I feel the twinge, I get scared. Am I going to have a heart attack? Am I having a stroke? Mm-hmm. Um, our dog, I think, is in the process of dying. My mom mm-hmm. just died in the nursing home. They had the COVID outbreak there. Mm, um, I'm sorry. Things in the family. Family environment is very hard. A lot of stress. Okay. All right. Julie, did you hear me say, by the way, I love your name. Um, <laughs> did you, <laughs> did you hear me? <laughs> did you hear me talk about the two minute roll with our caller Tracy earlier yes. in the show? Yes. All right. I'm telling yes. you, girl, this will rock your world. It's free and it's convenient because it works wherever your brain is and your brain's usually with you wherever you are. Our heads are big <laughs> satellite dishes. You've heard me say that every thought has its own frequency. It's like we're on a radio station when we're in that we, you know, we dig this black hole of these negative thoughts. We want to change the channel. We want to disrupt it. 
And that's how we do it. When you're feeling blue or you're feeling fearful or worried or scared or whatever, you ask yourself, is this going to kill me in the next two minutes? And if it's not, you know, it's fake. Your brain's making it up and you immediately disconnect that frequency, Julie, when that happens and you immediately raise your vibrational level to the level of spirit because curiosity is based in love. It's fun. You know, when you're curious about something, you're interested and it's fun. So you immediately raise your vibrational level and then you ask, how is this benefiting me? Well, it's at least pointing out fake news that you're making up in your head. You know, we're all hardwired for fear. We're all waiting for that saber toothed tiger to come around the corner and eat us for lunch. Well, he's been dead for millions of years, but we're still hardwired for fear. So the two minute rule will rock your world. It will change everything. And unlike what a lot of philosophies are just send that thought love and watch it drift away you're still in the same darn frequency you're still in the same radio cha channel you want to change the channel so is this going to kill me in the next two minutes you start doing that it's going to be a habit and when you feel bad you're going to snap out of it fast and then when you're in a high vibration level you feel good that's when good things are attracted to you so Thanks for calling, Julie. Hang in there. Use the two-minute rule. Everybody, you're listening to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and we are talking on the phone with Miss Maggie. Let me get Maggie on. Hi, Maggie. Hi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Thanks for hanging in there with us all this time. Yeah. I just discovered you today on Stuart Pierce's Deep Dialogue. Oh, he's fabulous, isn't he? I did a workshop with him in Omega. He is extraordinary. Uh -huh. He's just unbelievable. Yeah, I got to be on his show, I think it was Monday, earlier this week, and he, he's like talking to Carson from Delton Abbey. He's a, for those of you that don't know who Stuart is, he's a Shakespearean actor who was on Broadway for a while, and then he became a voice coach for people like Margaret Thatcher and Princess Diana and the royal family and all these movie stars and other celebrities and politicians and all kinds of people, so... Well, I'm so delighted that you that you listened in. Thanks so much. Maggie, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Wexford, Pennsylvania, which is just north of Pittsburgh. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. Well, good. You got a question for me? Yeah. I um, had um, an issue with unforgiveness. I hardened my heart and uh, wouldn't forgive somebody and ended up having a little stroke. No. And um, I'm through it. It's not not very severe or anything. No one would even know that I had one. But mm -hmm. I'm I'm uh, on like five blood pressure medications now, and oh I um, want to know if I have more healing to do with the unforgiveness, or if I'm doing what I need to be doing, and it'll just take time. I'm just um, working working at it to do all the right things, exercise, eat well, meditate, mm -hmm. breathe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the good stuff. Okay. All right. Let me get you on my radar and I want to look at your head. Let's see. When, okay. uh, how long ago was this that you had the stroke? It was in March. And one thing they did find, they couldn't find the stroke with a CT, so they had to do an MRI. And then they found something called a meningioma. Mm -hmm. which is supposedly stable, but I have that going on too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, meningioma sounds like it's malignant to me. Is that what they're talking about? No, what is that? It's actually, it's actually benign. They told okay. me it's benign. Great. Okay. All right. So that's where my energy went right off the bat was to that I'm thinking okay you got a mass in there so that makes sense thank you for mentioning that um, where the brain bleed is I see it looks like a 
like a an area of just clotted blood that's kind of you know drying up and stuff so i'm in, encapsulating that and removing it out of your head maggie mm. and i'm gonna i'm gonna mm. remove energetically that uh tumor as well and then let's do a quick mm. dna healing on you um for okay. the tumor um dna is the recipe that tells the cells how to behave i see a big x chromosome come out of you will have x's boys have a y girls have two x's and there are four amino acids nucleic acids excuse me that are uh the basis of dna and they're atcg they stand for nucleic acids so i'm watching them get rearranged imagine these strips of dna come out of this chromosome they remind me of pieces of paper you find in a fortune cookie with a fortune written mm -hmm. on them and my analogies mm -hmm. maggie are really hilarious at times but it's just to give you a quick frame of reference so you can envision what i'm seeing in my mind's eye because it's going to help mm -hmm. integrate the healing into your body i have three strands of dna that are being resequenced imagine playing scrabble in warp speed the letters are getting up and moved around uh, one strand of dna can have a hundred thousand letters on it can have up to a billion letters on it so I'm watching that happen really fast. When they're reconfigured, they go back into the X. The X will then go back into your body. Two have already snapped back in. They remind me of if you pull out a tape measure from a sewing kit and then you want to retract it, you push that little button, it goes flying back into its case. That's what it mm -hmm. reminds me of when they go back in. Okay, they're all back in. That X is back into your body. That will help you not create cancer cells or other tumor cells when we do that there's been some kind of a mutation in the dna so we just corrected it energetically which will integrate into your body the thing i want you to look up though as far as the blood pressure is do you have a pen can you write down this rep this website um i can grab one okay or just remember it it's easy zona z as in zebra o n as in nancy a zona.com go to zona.com there's okay. a device there called the zona plus it looks like a video game control device you press on it with your hand you squeeze it and it times it you squeeze it like for a minute on one hand and a minute on the other hand and it reduces blood pressure and helps people get off medication. I have clients all over the world I've recommended it to and they're, they get off their medication, a lot of them. It was developed by our military. They found that when fighter pilots were going mock, they were taught to grab the joystick in the cockpit and squeeze it really hard to pull the G-forces. And they found that it reduced blood pressure in those that had high blood pressure. That's where the technology originated. And NASA uses it too when the astronauts blast off and they're to help them pull the G-forces. So look up Zona, Z-O-N, Z as in zebra, O-N as in Nancy A, Zona.com and check out the okay. Zona Plus and hopefully that will help. Oh, oh All right. thank you so much. You are so welcome. I hope you feel better. Thanks for calling. Oh. Take care. Oh, thank you. It's Bye-bye. Totally a blessing. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye. All righty, let's go to Marisol. Hi, Marisol. Let me see if I can get you unmuted here. Hi. There you go. Hi, Marisol. Hello, hello. Hi, how are hello. you? Hi, Marisol. I'm so excited. I started talking to you. I got I got about a minute and a half left. So where are you calling from, first of all? Yes, I'm calling I'm calling from Delaware, and I would like okay. to do a me. I I I have some digestive issues and a lot okay. of acid uh, reflux. So Marisol, I'm hearing my my music to play me out. Email me julietasjulieryan.com. I will shoot you a link to do the gut biome test and we can talk via email so julie at askjulieryan.com for anybody that's interested shoot me an email i'll send you a link for a gut biome test thanks for joining us everybody this week thanks for joining us be sure to follow julie on instagram and youtube at ask julie ryan and like her on facebook at ask julie ryan to schedule an appointment or submit a question please visit askjulieryan.com
This show is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be medical, psychological, financial, or legal advice. Please contact a licensed professional. The Ask Julie Ryan Show, Julie Ryan and all parties involved in producing, recording, and distributing it assume no responsibility for listeners' actions based on any information heard on this or any Ask Julie Ryan shows or podcasts.